Yeah. Hey, Melissa's back to talk Spurs in tonight's Thomas J. Henry point counterpoint. Now, assuming that Kawhi Leonard and LaMarcus Aldridge are your Spurs leading scorers, who figures to be the number three scoring option this year? You know, Don, I think it's either going to be Pau Gasol or Rudy Gay. I'd like it to be Pau. Pau, before he came to the Spurs, was a very big contributor with the, with the Chicago Bulls. And then he came to the Spurs and got a little lost. Mind you, it was his first season. The Spurs are a tough team to adjust to. Um, he felt a little lost on the offensive end, which is where he shines. I remember the locker room last season, he told me, you know, on every other team that I've been on throughout my entire career, I've always been either the number one or the number two option. And on this team, oftentimes I don't know where I stand. And so I think a lot of times last season, which is normal for a new guy on a new team, he deferred, he wasn't as aggressive as he could be. And obviously when Kawhi Leonard went out with that sprained ankle in the playoffs, the Spurs desperately needed some offense. So I think yeah. Pau Gasol needs to be that guy. He needs to be more aggressive on the offensive end instead of acquiescing to whatever role he thinks that he should be playing. He should take over and do what he knows. Well, this is point counterpoint, so I'm going to take issue with you. <laughs> and I think Powell's going to be the number four option. And get this, I think LaMarcus Aldridge is going to be the number three option. I think the second leading scorer of the Spurs is going to be Rudy Gay. If you look at Rudy Gay's entire career, he has never not averaged 18 points a game. And the way the NBA is changing, they need a guy who can create his own shot. And that's what they found out when Kawhi Leonard went down. They didn't have scores. They didn't have penetrators. They didn't have guys who could score the ball and guard the ball quick enough uh, athletically. Rudy Gay is that guy. Now, there is the caveat of his Achilles. Right. But I think that if he's healthy, I think Rudy Gay is going to get him 17, 18 a night. And I think LaMarcus is going to be the guy to get him 15, 16. And, and Powell's going to be right there with LaMarcus at about 14 or 15. But I think people will be pleasantly surprised with Rudy Gay and his offensive contribution to the Spurs. All right, now it's time for Roland with Roland, presented by Lone Star Mitsubishi. Melissa, this week your article in Spurs Nation, the magazine, focused on which players really need to step up. There's five that you singled out that have to improve if the Spurs are going to have any shot at competing for a championship. Yeah, so let's start out with Tony Parker. Uh, first of all, coming into this season, we just want him to be healthy. He needs to focus on his health. Next, Manu Ginobili. Uh, he's a guy who leaves it all on the court, puts his heart out on the court every single play during every single game. And so I think the best way that he can improve headed into this season is by leading by example, which he already does, but also by sort of making sure that he holds other guys to the standard that he holds himself to. LaMarcus, well, what doesn't LaMarcus need to improve upon? He had a disappearing act in the playoffs. Um, he needs to be a lot more aggressive on the offensive end. He needs to toughen up mentally. Uh, he needs to, at this point, in his third season with the Spurs, he needs to be making much more of a contribution. Pau Gasol, as we discussed, needs to be much more aggressive on the offensive end. Um, a lot of guys need to enter this season because the Spurs didn't do much during the offseason while a lot of other teams improved. And in order for the Spurs to really make noise, I think each player needs to be playing to their absolute best ability. The guy that I see has got to really step up. There's two offensively for sure. Patty Mills and Danny Green. Those guys were embarrassed by the Golden State Warriors. Patty Mills, I love him to death, but he was so outclassed against Steph Curry and those guys, he didn't deserve to be on the court. He couldn't guard, he couldn't stay in front of anybody, and he couldn't create his own shot. That's not to say that Patty can't improve enough to get better and do that. And then Danny Green, in my mind, has to become a better offensive player. We know Danny Green can shoot the three, and we know he can guard people, but I would love to see both of those guys take a huge step in their careers, especially now that uh, Patty Mills is getting paid what he's getting paid yeah. to, to actually come out and earn that money. So I think you're right. I think it's going to take a total team effort if these guys are going to have any chance of competing with the Warriors. I agree with you. Patty is now getting paid, and he needs to prove that he's worth that big contract. And Danny Green, he's incredibly solid for the Spurs on defense, and that's what's kept him on this team, and that's what's kept him in the starting lineup. But he needs to do a lot more. He's been kind of spotty with his shot. He has some games where he's incredible. He looks for a shot. He makes them. And then other games where he's just completely useless on the mm -hmm. offensive end. So I completely agree with you, Don. All right. It's going to be a very interesting season for the Spurs. And to read Melissa's entire piece and to see what she writes about each of the Spurs players that we just mentioned, pick up the latest SA Sports Nation, the magazine. You'll also find a player poster of Cowboys star Des Bryant inside. The magazine fully covers the most topics that we've talked about tonight. It's available at several locations, including your nearest TV.
Hey, we're just getting started here on SA Sports Nation. Up next, the Riders Roundtable, where we will discuss Texas A&M, Baylor, and the Big 12 in college football, as well as the NFL predictions and all of that when we come back.